Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture 6 of taxation and we are going to go through self-employment income. In my earlier lecture, lecture 5, I have introduced you to employment income. This one is self-employment income. Both are charged into income tax. Both are non-savings income but with some differences. Now, we are going to go through how do you assess your trading income. If you are a self-employed person, we don't say you are getting a salary or bonus like how we have done for employment. We say it's a trading income. Okay, and the way we assess the trading income for tax is different compared to employment income. Then, badges of trade. That means if this factors are there in a transaction, it means it's a trade. And if it's not there, it's not trade. Then we are going to go through how do you adjust accounting profit, disallowable expenditure, other adjustments, relief for pre-trading expenditure. Pre-trading means any expenditure that you have incurred before starting your trading. And for those, you are going to get some relief. Okay. Cash basis for small unincorporated business. Practice objective test questions. We are definitely going to do questions on all these areas, but at the end, we also going to do practice objective test questions that is from your section A of your taxation. And finally, we are going to summarize this lecture. So, like my previous lecture, lecture 5, which was employment income, which was around 4 hours 30 minutes, even this lecture is going to be around 4 hours. Okay because we have lots of things and more than that lots of questions so that you become a pro in each of the topics okay now overview so we are going to go through income from self-employment badges of trade capital gain see when something does not fall in the trade then capital gain tax is charged either cgd is charged or it is exempt from cgd also but if it's not in trade, it falls for capital gain. It does not come in the income tax. If it falls inside the trade, income tax is charged on it. Okay. So it is known as trading income. Pre trading expenditure, adjustments to profit, and cash basis. So trading income. Any sole trader who is starting his or her own business or a trade, okay, their profit will be assessed as trading income. Remember how we have separate types of income, employment income. Under employment income, we have salary. Salary is one type of employment income. Bonus is one type of employment income. Then we had we had benefits where company car was provided, accommodation was provided, expenses were provided, uh, mileage, etc. There were so many benefits, right? Same way for a, a sole trader, his profit, okay, he is going to have a profit, not a salary. So it will be assessed as trading income. Whoever is having a trade or a profession or a vocation. And it's for unincorporated trader only, sole trader. Why not cooperated? Because the moment the trader becomes cooperated, they are charged to cooperation tax. Okay, it falls under company. So make sure that it is unincorporated. The status needs to be unincorporated. If it's cooperated, then company tax will apply there. I mean, cooperation tax. Then it becomes a company. It's no longer a self employed income. Okay, now, so individuals who is running an incorporated business, you can call them sole trader or self-employed. Any term is fine. The meaning is all the same. How do you assess their profit? So their profit will be assessed on a current year basis. Current year basis means whatever the profit that falls in their tax year. Okay. Up to that much it will be charged because see the year end of a company and the tax year end are not the same 
when is the tax year end tax year starts from 6th april and ends at 5th april but some but company year end for financial statement let's say it's 31st december so you see company year end is 31st december tax year end is april 5th of april so it's not falling in the same line you understanding so sometimes a company's profit for 12 months partially it will be taxed in one tax year the other half will be taxed in the another tax year most of the time this is the scenario why because the year end is not the same if let's say a company is also preparing financial statement from 6th april to 5th april like the tax year then no issue then everything is in the same tax year the issue comes because the sole trader when they are preparing financial statement okay it is not the year end is not as the same tax year so some of that falls in the one tax year some of the profit falls in the another tax year so in two separate tax years it will be assessed that's why we say current year basis whatever currently it falls okay c y b now so this means profit that is assessed in 12 month period of account ending in that tax year you have to see which tax year the profit the 12 month period of account ends for example 31st december 2022 which tax year end will it fall 22 23 2223 right yeah so this is the question let's say account has been prepared for the year ended 31st december 2022 in which tax year are the profit going to be assessed tax year 2022 23 why because the tax year end is 5th april 2023 which comes after 31st december 2022 right definitely your tax year has to be a year which is after the year end of the financial statement it cannot be before that but if this question let's say i change this question to let's say th year end is 31st march 2022 then what then this tax year will not come then the tax year will be 2021 22 why because for th if it was 31st march 2022 year end you can't use this tax year 2022 23 because this tax year starts from 6th april 2022 of another 6 days later after the year end of 31st march 2022 that's why okay now next section of this lecture is badges of trade so you have to see whether individual is in the trading or not if it's yes the profit will be assessed as trading income if it's no then you have to see capital gain tax then it will be charged as a cgt tax and if not then is exempt now there are some test which needs to be done to see whether trade is there or not okay nine batches of trade are there that means nine separate factor first one subject matter which is the s the reason i have used s i'm using acronyms so that when one needs to memorize the nine badges of trade they can easily memorize by using the letter the starting letter of each word like in this case subject s so subject matter of the transaction that means what type of good are you use like are you is it like a good which is normally used for trading you have to see that next next badge is ownership you have to see the length of the period of the ownership o short period of ownership means yes it's a trading because trading is what buying selling buying selling buying selling you are buying something today you are selling tomorrow or after one month or after two months within 12 months okay within 12 months so that is an example of trading but if you are keeping an asset for let's say 5 year then you can't say it's a trading who will keep an asset for 5 years and then you will say oh, then if you sell then it's not a trading then is for investment purpose you have kept it that's why short period of ownership is trading and if it's a long period of ownership is not trading third factor frequency which is f see the frequency of a similar transaction not different different transaction transaction has to be of similar nature but it's done frequently 
and to the same person okay by the same person frequent transaction means trading and the fourth factor improvements i see whether any work is done to the existing good any improvement is done or not so that that good becomes more marketable then it's a trading sign of a trading fifth one reason why are you selling if it's a forced sale just to raise cash it's not trading motive if it's a profit motive trading finance let's say you are taking a loan and you are financing that loan from the proceed of your sale you are repaying that loan from the proceeds of the sale you are selling your asset and with that only you are repaying your loan then it's a sign of a trade okay finance so you can use an acronym for this what what is this so fi so firm okay so firm so firm now method of accusation a next one is accusation see when you acquire an asset it's more likely that is a trade rather than you getting that asset through a gift or you have inherited that gift let's say from your parent or your grandparent or your wife or anyone right so if it's a gift or an inheritance it's unlikely that it's a trade then st similar transaction let's say you are carrying a trade and the transactions you are doing is similar to your existing trade then it's a trading so now we are going to explain in detail the nine badges of trade starting with the subject three reasons a person might acquire an asset first reason for investment if it's for investment purpose ignore it's not a trade income tax is not charged rather cgt tax is charged which we are not going to study now when we go through capital gain tax then we'll study there because right now we are in section b income tax second reason you might get it for private use again not subject to tax third reason if it's for a trade inventory yes it is subject to income tax because it's a trading transaction why do you have inventory for trading purpose no one has trading for investment purpose or for private use second reason okay and remember one more thing for investment okay if you are going to say that it's for an investment purpose normally that good needs to be of either be an income producing like that good has to produce income like having a land or share or it is held for aesthetic reasons like work of arts why do you keep it just for looking and you know it's beautiful and people want to see it right that's why lots of museums and all those things are there people invest in these things because it gives them a return later on of holding it so it could be for one of the two reasons but the good has to be having that characteristics income producing and aesthetic reasons let's say an individual is acquiring 1 million rolls of toilet paper and he is then reselling them at profit so it's very likely that it's for a trading purpose rather than for private or an investment purpose and no one buys also toilet paper if you see the nature of toilet paper no one will buy it for investment purpose because it can't give you any income on its own no 1 million someone will buy for private use not that much okay then ownership usually longer the period between acquisition and disposal okay it's very unlikely that that is not a trading the gap should be less then only you can say it's a trade but also you have to see the nature of the asset also with the time okay why let's say take example of land and shares both we say are for investment purpose right but but if you compare the length of period of ownership of both land is land stays more you hold land 
longer than their quoted shares. Why? Because the market for land work operates slowly compared to shares. Shares, if I want to sell today, tomorrow I'll get a market very easily. Let's say even for investment purpose, I'm holding it for five years. I can easily sell after five years. But land, if I do the same thing, I will not be able to get the market easily. Land is a lengthy, complex process. Okay, ask someone who is dealing with lands and shares and then ask and see the difference. Okay. Now, third, frequency. So if in the toilet case, okay, a single transaction like toilet roll case can be considered as trading. Okay, because you usually similar transactions. If you are into similar transactions, it is most likely that it's a trading activity. Now, again, nature of asset is important. Let's say stock exchange, you are having shares for investment purpose, but, but if you are buying and selling over 200 stock exchange, then it's very likely that it's for trading purpose. No one has, uh, keeps it for investment purpose, not that much. And let's say, A person okay is buying shares in a mill owning companies and selling the asset once if he does this you can say it's for investment purpose but if he does this four times then the same thing becomes trading and hence charge to income tax so that's why you have to see the nature of the asset and also this principle frequency fourth improvement okay so buying something in bulk okay if you are buying something in bulk and subsequently making any changes to it before selling it it's a trade circumstances as i told before for sell is not a trading okay motive if the motive is profit it is very likely it's a trading but you need to know that sometimes even motive is absent still is a trading because your action ultimately leads to profit even if your even if your motive was not profit from the start like this example just see this example you are having buying a large quantity of silver coins let's say to hedge against the devaluation of sterling so ultimately what are you going to do you are going to get a profit in the sterling terms right so it's a trading seven finance this i've explained before when you are repaying your loan with selling of your asset it's a trade okay now let's say an individual took a loan to acquire silver bullion at a high interest rate okay so and in the circumstances, it's clear that he needs to sell asset in the short term to repay the loan. So this is a sign of a trade. Accusation. As I told you, through gift and inheritance, if you have acquired anything, it is not trading. But if you yourself have purchased it, it's trade. And in this case, HMRC sometimes has to demonstrate that before the sale of the asset, taxpayer had changed their intention. That means they have made an asset that they have got for investment. Now they are making it into trading inventory. For example, where a land is developed for sale. It happens initially, land is for what purpose? Investment purpose. But now you are changing intention and saying land, you are developing it for sale. Then it becomes trading. Nine existence of similar trading transactions. Okay, if the two of your transaction, existing transaction and new transaction that you are undertaking, if they are similar, if they are related, it's trading. More likely, it's trading only. But if it's not related, then you can say it's not trading. Okay, for example, for example, let's say a property developer. Okay, he is acquiring some property. So it's very likely that it could be for the trading purpose. But if the same property was acquired by someone else who is not a property developer like butcher, okay, 
if a butcher gets that property he can argue that he got for investment purpose because dealing in property is not butcher's job so he can say for investment purpose he got the property but property developer can't say that because his job is selling property so if he buys property he can't argue that he got it for investment purpose it's very hard for him to convince that is not for trading purpose because they are same so can you understand that's the thing now adjusting accounting profit see when you are a sole trader what you get is not a salary like employees what you get is your profit so every sole trader must have prepared some financial statement some profit they have calculated let's say net profit the net profit that they calculate is accounting profit it is not the taxable profit mind you taxable profit and accounting profit are separate because the rules of tax might be same because tax allows some expenditure and they disallow some expenditure whereas when you are preparing financial accounts you are purely going by the rules the accounting standard so accounting standard and tax rules do not align they uh, they do but not most of the time in some areas that's why there's a difference and you need to adjust now you have to bring your accounting profit to taxable trading profit because we are going to tax the taxable trading profit not the accounting profit that you have calculated or your accountant calculated for you so you start with the net profit okay because main reason as i told you before let me explain again tax law might not allow you to deduct some expenses but you have deducted while calculating net profit so what do you have to do now you have to add those expenses back and make that net profit to taxable trading profit according to the tax law that's the whole purpose so either you can adjust and call them as taxable trading profit ttp or tax adjusted trading profit whatever name you put is the same meaning understand this okay and most traders they produce this tax accounts using accrual basis that means based on income receivable and expenses payable so all the rules that i'm going to tell you now is on the accrual basis however however for small traders under some limited circumstances there are cash basis okay there is cash basis that you can choose but which we are going to study later on at the end of this lecture that's the last topic i think for this lecture right now we are on the accrual basis so we are going to follow accrual basis throughout okay so in your exam you will be given one of these four types of adjustments or maybe all the four in one question okay so i'm going to tell you why you need to adjust and how that adjustment is done always start with the net profit given to you this will be given to you in the exam okay they will give some net profit they have calculated and all then either you add or you deduct from the net profit that is the meaning of adjustment <coughs> so first adjustment could be let's say some expenditure tax says you can't deduct but you have deducted you have deducted so add back because earlier you deducted to get the net profit but you can't deduct those expenses taxes tax losses so again add back to your accounting profit next set of adjustment is taxable trading income okay they are not included in the statement of profit and loss but if it's taxable trading income tax law says it should be there so what do you do you add back to accounting profit third one expenditure tax says yes you can deduct but you have not deducted so now deduct fourth one income that you have included but tax says no it's not taxable so again deduct first to add last to deduct okay go through the scenarios over and over again and with questions you will understand this better now this is a pro forma which you need to know you always start with the net profit then you add what do you add not everything some things as i told before expenditure 
which you can't deduct, but you have deducted. Now add back. Expenditure allowable for taxation purpose. You don't add or deduct. You put it as zero. But you have to write it. Even though it's zero, you have to still write it. You will get one mark. Taxable trading profit, which was not there, add it. Is simply the table only we are bringing as a pro forma now. The table previously we went through, that thing only. Expenditure, you have not charged, but you can deduct. Now deduct. Income, that was there in the account, but it's not taxable. Deduct. Then capital allowances, you deduct. Capital allowances itself is a whole topic for which we have a separate lecture, okay, which we are going to go through later on. I think around 7 or 8th lecture. Then the result is what we want. Tax adjusted trading profit or taxable trading profit. Anything is fine. Now on this tax adjusted trading profit only, you will charge your income tax. This is what non savings. So 20%, 40%, or 45%. That's how you do. Now, so one more thing you need to understand here. We are only calculating trading profit here. There could be other incomes also, but which does not fall under trading. That's why we are not taking here. It does not mean they are excluded from tax, but it's just that under the trading, they don't come in that topic. Like one is rental income. Okay, for rental income, there is income tax, but it does not come under trading profit. Rather, rental income comes under your property business income. Property business, property business income is my next lecture. Okay, which we are going to go through. There we are going to go through leases, rent, furnished holiday accommodation, and some other reliefs. That itself is a lecture. That's a topic. Anyways. So, it's not that that thing is there, that thing, no. Everything is taxable. But the category, the topics that they fall, they are grouped. They are grouped in different, different categories. Rent has a different feature. So, rent falls in property business. Trading profit has a different feature. So, it falls under this topic, self-employment. Whereas, employment income like salary, bonus, benefit, they fall under separate category. But ultimately, everything is taxed at non-savings red. 20, 40, 45 percent. This is what you need to remember. You always need to detail, zoom in and zoom out. See the detail and then see the bigger picture and then try to connect everything. Okay. Now, you have to see whether adjustment is actually needed also or not. Sometimes adjustment might not be necessary. Maybe it's not having any impact. So, you don't have to add, you don't have to deduct also. But you have to explain. You just can't ignore it. Okay, so in that case, where you have to decide, then you have to apply the principles of normal commercial accountancy, and this will be overridden by the tax law. What does it mean? That means if an item is allowed for accounting, it is allowed for tax unless there's a provision in the tax law requiring an adjustment. Mostly, Whatever is there in accounting, if accounting says it is allowed, tax also says it is allowed. Unless tax says this expenditure is not allowable or that is not allowable. Whereas in accounting, it's different. Then where your accounting and tax law are different, then you have to do an adjustment. Otherwise, no adjustment is required if they are same. For example, a car expenditure. Accounting is also allowing. Tax rule is also allowing. No, no adjustment is required. For example, uh, expenditure. Both tax rule and accounting are not allowing. It's a disallowed expenditure. Then no adjustment is required. But if accounting is allowing something, tax rule is not allowing. If accounting is not allowing something, tax rule is allowing. You see, if there is a difference between accounting rule and tax rule, then you have to do this adjustment. This is where you decide. This is your starting place. Now, next category, disallowable expenditure. There's a list of this expenditure. So do not get bored, guys. Okay, you have to keep going through this. I know it's a tough and a tedious work and a very boring work to go through a list. 
but ultimately it's you who is going to get the benefit at the end of the day keep doing this okay first set of expenditure expenditure see we are in what trading no so any expenditure not incurred for trading purpose should be disallowed or disallowed disallowed common sense it's very easy expenditure not incurred for trading purpose disallowed not just allowed not incurred wholly and exclusively so expenditure is disallowed reason from the trade the expenditure is very remote you can't say that because of this trade only this expenditure you have incurred you have to do a remoteness test to decide this whether that expenditure is very far away from the trade or not far away that is the meaning of remote far away the distance the proximity okay next if that expenditure that you have incurred has more than one purpose other than trading that means you have to check the duality principle duality means for two reasons dual more than one reason that expenditure have incurred then you can't deduct it's just allowable remoteness test so now we'll go through duality principle and remoteness test remoteness test says okay expenditure is very remote from the trade if it was incurred in some capacity other than that of trading for example for example see i always talk with examples okay without example i don't talk always keep your examples ready normal accountancy and compliance taxation fees are allowable why because when you have to trade you need accountant or not you need you need to comply with the tax rules or not yes you need so they are allowed why because these two expenses are wholly and exclusively for trading purpose otherwise you will not incur this cost but if you are taking any personal tax advice can you deduct it you can't because it has personal reasons also apart from the trading so the cost of personal tax advice Mm -hmm. you can't deduct it's a disallowed expense next is duality principle let's say a self employed person okay he is not able to eat lunch at home so he is now eating outside so what is he doing because he is now eating outside he is claiming the extra cost of eating outside has a tax allowable expense he is saying because he is incurring extra cost of eating outside he can claim that expense as a deduction from the tax tell me can he do this no this expenditure he can't deduct why the purpose is dual it is not for the it is not just for the purpose of work that is eating from outside it's just his option he wants to eat it's just too lazy maybe so it's not a proper reason to say that only because of work purpose he has to eat from outside therefore he's claiming this deduction he can't do that there are two separate reasons you see so hence not allowed next example there's a barrister okay barrister he is refused a tax allowable expense for her expenditure on the back clothing necessary for court appearances you must have seen in courts and all all these lawyers they need to wear that black uh, cloth right for that he is charging is like he can claim this expense as a tax deductible can he do that no the decision is he can't deduct why because the wearing of that black cloth could be for the personal reasons as well as professional so you see two reasons are there it can't be this and also and that no it has to be trade only then only you can deduct so no third example so if you have incurred expenditure for both trading and non trading purpose what do you do you can deduct you can deduct up to your business portion like how much of it you have used it for the business purpose up to that much you can deduct you have to proportion accordingly private business use and uh, private use private is you can deduct business use you can deduct provided you can separately identify also that 75% have used for business 25% is personal use if if you can identify these differences separately you can identify personal and business use you can't claim this is mostly very common in cars 
you can say that this is your business mileage this is your private mileage so for business mileage you can deduct private mileage you can't deduct then appropriations appropriation means when you are withdrawing fund from the business mostly sole traders does this whenever they want to withdraw fund is their own money they have invested they are the one who is managing everything they can withdraw the fund anytime so what do they do is this is an expense no this is not an expense this is rather a profit extraction they are extracting their profit this is not an expense so therefore it, you can say in other words drawings this is known as drawings this is a disallowed expense it's not an expense so it's a disallowed expense you can't claim for deduction for withdrawing examples like interest paid to the owner on capital invested in the business any interest that is paid to the owner for the capital invested in the business disallowed expense next salary or drawings taken by the sole trader or even partners because partners also comes under unincorporated sector them also not allowed and any private expenditure private element of expenditure relating to the phone or the car owner's car or owner's telephone not allowed these are disallowed expenses but if this was for employees some other people then some of these expenses might be allowed but for sole trader is disallowed why because these are not expenses for them this is just that they are extracting profit in different different ways either taking it as a drawing either taking it as a salary either taking it out as a interest of, of their capital invested in any way doesn't matter or either they are using the private they are making a private use of the car or the phone it's their thing only it's not an expense for them so that's the thing now we are going to do questions illustration 1 car expenses here we are going to find out the amount of expenses that is allowable for jim's car okay so this is about a car and he drove it for 20000 miles and the car expenses is 10800 each working day he drives from home to his office which is 10 miles he works 5 days a week and 50 weeks a year jim drove 1500 miles on a holiday and for the rest of the year his wife's car was made for private journeys jim's wife owns her own car and is not involved in jim's business okay now remember here you can't claim the entire expense okay why because part of the mileage is for private and part of it is for business only the one that is relating to business mileage you can claim deduction for it which we have to work out okay over the total mileage we have to find the proportion for business mileage because only that is allowable question asks what is allowable only the business mileage out of the total so out of this 20000 miles find out business and private mileage business you can't do but you can start with the private mileage how see here it says he works from home to office he drives from home to office every day every working day see home to office if you know if you have gone through my previous lecture lecture 5 employment income there i told you under car it's a benefit right traveling from home to office and office to home comes under private it comes under private journeys private mileage not business so at least with this information we can get the private and the balance will be for business right so we'll work out the private mileage see he is working from home to office same way he is going from office to home also every day when he goes from home to office he has to come back from office to home so there are two journeys which is done each day not just one home to office office to home home to office office to home like this every day two journeys are made in a day 
So now we just need to multiply and find out the total private mileage. Okay. So he said it is 10 miles. Okay. 10 miles away. So 10 into because 2. Okay. Home and office, office and home. 5 days a week. Multiply this by 5. And 50 weeks a year. So if you multiply, the total comes to 5,000. 5,000. Not only that, Jim drove on a holiday for 1,500 miles. This also comes under private. So add 1,500, which is 6,500. So out of 20,000, 6,500 is private. That means the balance 13,500 is business. So on this, you can claim deduction. This is allowable. So what is the expense that is given? 10,800. Now we'll find the proportion. That is allowable. 10,800 multiplied by 13,500 over 20,000 because 20,000 is the total mileage. How much? Find out. 7290. So private will be just the balance if you want to get 10,800 minus 7290, which is 3510. So this is allowable. This is not allowable because this is private. Okay. Excessive salary paid to sole traders family. See, business owners, okay, they often employ their staff, their spouses or members of their family in their business. Okay for which they are often paid salary. Salary paid to the family of the owner is allowable, but the condition is it should not be excessive. That means, for example, if you are giving the same salary to someone outside your family, okay, up to that much of the salary is allowable. But if you are giving any more salary beyond that point, because of the relationship with you, and the, with your spouses or the members of your family, right? You are giving them more salary. Then that more, that excess is not allowed. That means any remuneration at the commercial rate for the work performed is acceptable. Any salary beyond that point is not allowed. Now let's do one question. Test your understanding too. Here we have to explain the probable adjustment in calculating tax adjusted training profit for the year ended 5th April 2023. Okay, so this is about a business of running own advertising agency. And Sheila was employed as a part time typist. He was, she was paid 4500 per annum, but the Typist then left and Sheila could not find a suitable replacement. Sheila, Richard therefore agreed to do Sheila's typing at home. Richard is Sheila's husband. So during the year, Sheila paid Richard a salary of 10,000. Okay. Now you need to adjust your trading profit. Adjusting trading profit means you can only deduct what is allowable. And if it's not allowable, you have to add back. Okay. So if you see a Richard's salary, 10,000, tell me whether it's an excessive salary or it's normal for a typist to be paid 10,000. It's excessive, right? Because when Sheila was a part-time typist, she was paid 4,500, whereas Richard is being given a salary of 10,000, which is excessive, right? So what should you do? You have to find out up to 4,500 you can allow. The balance disallow. So the balance that is 10,000 minus 4,500 which is 5,500. This is a disallowed. The excess you can't deduct. Okay. 
So you have to add back with the net profit. See, they didn't tell you calculate. The question is explain the adjustment. You just have to explain. That's it. The next expenditure is interest payable. Here, interest on borrowings, on overdraft, credit card, higher purchase contract is an allowable trading expense which is calculated on an accrual basis. Allowable, allowable means you can deduct. Now, for unincorporated business, any late payment interest that is charged by HMRC in respect of the late paid income tax. By the way, we have gone through all this late payment interest, repayment of interest in lecture two. Okay, you need to go back to my lecture two to see all that. I'm not going to repeat it here. Okay, so anyway, for late impairment interest charged in respect of you paying your income tax late or even CGT capital gain tax is never allowable. Remember that you can't deduct it, it's not allowable. And even the repayment interest that you have received from HMRC is also not taxable. That is not allowable, this is not taxable for unincorporated business. Next is capital expenditure. Any expenditure on capital asset is not allowable. Why? It is not for trading. It is not a trading expense. It is a capital expense. And we are in the trading profit. So only trading expense could be deducted, not any other expense, right? Makes sense? Next. So because of that, if expenditure on capital asset is not allowable, same why depreciation is an expense on that asset. That is also not allowed. So if there is any loss on the sale of a non-current asset, that is also not allowed. Amortization of a lease, not allowed. So everything is disallowed. Capital, expenditure on capital asset is disallowed. Same way, depreciation on that or amortization of lease is disallowed. Then, that's why you have to make a distinction between revenue and capital expenditure. Why? Revenue expenditure is allowable, capital expenditure is not allowable. Okay, and sometimes it's not very clear cut also. Some scenarios that will be given to you, you will see this, you will face a conflict between these two. Okay, so you have to see, let's say, an expenditure. Okay, it's a repair. A repair of an asset is revenue expenditure, allowable. But if it's an improvement to an asset overall, it's a capital expenditure, not allowable. And any capital expenditure on plant and machinery and structure and building is disallowed. Correct? But you can qualify for capital allowances. Remember that pro forma when we were deducting expenses to find tax adjusted trading profit, where we deducted capital allowance also, where I've told you capital allowance itself is a topic, big topic, which I'm going to cover in the later lecture. So, for now, know what is capital allowances. Capital allowances is like a form of a depreciation allowance for tax purpose. For tax purpose, you are allowed to deduct from your uh, value of plant and machinery for the tax purpose. Okay, it's like how you you deduct depreciation from the cost of asset. Same way here, from the cost of asset, you deduct capital allowances for the tax purpose. Now, repair versus improvement. We are going to dive down into depth. Why students often make mistakes in this too? See, cost of, so I'm going to take you through an example, okay? To identify repair from improvement. If you are spending anything initially, initial repairs, in order to make that asset usable, it's a disallowed. Why? It's a capital expenditure, right? If you are investing anything in that asset to make that asset usable, to use that asset, it's not revenue, it is capital expenditure. So it's disallowed. And let's say cost of initial repair is allowed. But only if the asset can be put into use before any repairs are carried out. That means you don't need to do any such changes to the asset. Even without those changes, repairs, you can make use the asset. Then if you are like doing some small repairment and repairs and all to that asset, then those 
expenses those initial repairs small repairs is allowed because you're not changing you are not doing those repairs to make the asset usable you can use that asset in whatever condition it is just a minor repair here and there whereas in the first scenario you have to do that repair it's necessary for you to do that repair without that you can't use the asset then it's disallowed next the treatment of restoration cost this is another disputed area see if a part of an asset needs renewal or you need to restore just a part subsidiary part of an asset subsidiary means a small part then it's allowable why it's a repair but if you are replacing the entire asset it's an improvement it's not allowable let's take factory chimney okay if you are replacing the factory chimney it is a repair to the factory but where it is deemed as a replacement of a separate asset it is treated as a disallowed capital expenditure if you are replacing this and the entire asset with a new asset then it's not allowed but if you're just changing a rooftop of the factory or just a one machinery in the factory you're just replacing it then it's allowable it's a re repair not improvement car leasing next expense leases when you're taking car leases okay here rental and lease charges are payable in respect of lease cars they are allowed also but there's a limit to this they are allowable where co2 emission of the car is 50 grams per kilometer or less if it's more it's not allowable at all if it's less yes and what if it exists 50 grams if co2 emission exists 50 grams only 15 percent is disallowed that means in other words 85 percent is allowed 15 percent disallowed means 85 percent is allowed of rental only charges but if it's less than 50 gram the entire thing is allowable let's go through an example so let's say a person enters into a leasing contract for a car with co2 emission of 58 so it's more than 50 right rental charge is 8000 so up to 85 percent of 8000 is allowable that means 15 percent of 8000 is disallowed which is 1200 okay now subscription and donation is the next expense but before we move on to subscription and donation let us do question from car leasing uh oh no i finished the question sorry illustration two was done so now subscription and donation okay if that subscription is a professional subscription okay could be for the trade or a professional subscription then it's allowable you can deduct why because that subscription was done for the purpose of trade if you are doing a charitable donation you have to meet three tests before it could be allowed first test wholly and exclusively for trading purpose that charity donation should be for the trade purpose for example you are donating there to promote your business name then allowable second should be local and reasonable in size in relation to your business third has to be made to a registered charity if it's not registered is not allowable if all these three conditions are met allowable now if the donation is disallowed but the payment that you have made is to the charity taxpayer can claim a relief for it under gift aid provision subscriptions and donations to political parties are not allowed non charitable gifts are not allowable except as set out below we'll see that entertaining and gifts entertainment expenditure disallowed but there's an exception if that expenditure is relating to employees that means you are not giving it to entertainment of others only for employees it's allowed gifts to employees gifts to employees are allowable but 
gift when you are giving a gift it can fall within the benefit rules also we have covered this in lecture 5 under employment income right gifts may fall within the benefit rule and then it might be assessed as an employment income so you have to be very careful what type of gift is it it's a benefit then if it's a benefit if that gift is a benefit employment income will take hold you have to go by go through the employment income if it's not it's just a normal gift cash or something not a benefit then it's allowed gifts to customer gifts to customer are only available if it's less than 50 okay for each customer it should be less than 50 per year and the gift should not be a food a drink a tobacco or vouchers the gift must carry an advertisement saying advertisement of the business making the gift so basically the reason for gifting is to advertise your business the cost of the gift does not meet this condition disallowed immediately okay and the total gift to one customer should not exceed 50 in that tax year if it exists 50 the full cost of that gift is taxable full cost not, not just the excess if you are giving any gifts okay as a sample because you want to advertise your good to the public it is allowed it's allowable then legal and professional charges general principle is if expenditure is incurred for the purpose of trade it's allowable same like legal and professional if it's allowed if it's incurred for the purpose of trade it's allowable examples like if you want to chase your debtors you have to incur some legal fee because not all debtors pay on time you need legal action against them your customer sometimes which means legal fee this is allowable because it is for the purpose of your trade you are incurring this cost next if you are incurring any charges to defend the title to the non current asset it's allowable but if the expenditure is a capital nature it's disallowed like to acquire a new asset new non current asset you are incurring a fee it's not allowed but there are following the exceptions for example if you are incurring some fees or let's say other costs to obtain a long term debt finance like a loan for a sole trader those fees are allowable because it is for the purpose of his trade only he's incurring that loan and then cost on that loan that's why cost of registering patent is again allowable why do you register patent for the purpose of your trade you don't do it for personal reasons so it's allowable now when it comes to leases short lease short lease means less than 50 year okay in my next lecture under property income i'm going to cover lease in detail but for now know that short lease means less than 50 year any lease less than 50 is short more than 50 is long only short lease is pay, uh, taxable that's why we are not talking about long lease so short lease when you are renewing it there's some expense to renew a lease contract this is allowable because leases is just for the purpose of trade. That's why. But any expenses that you have incurred initially, like for the initial granting of the lease, those expenses are not allowed. You must have incurred some legal expenses while getting that granting of the lease. It's not allowed. Only the renewal of short lease is allowed. Then impairment losses and allowances for trade receivable it's another expense so when you are writing of a trade debt okay recovery of the trade debt that previously you have written off is taxable because earlier you did not tax you wrote off the trade debt now when it becomes you have recovered it it is taxable now there is an allowance an allowance for the irrecoverability or impairment of trade receivable 
provided it is calculated according to either IFR standard or UK gap. Okay. If it is there, then you can have an allowance for in payment of trade receivable. That means your receivables might not pay. Your customers might not pay. So due to that, in payment of trade receivable means your customers might not pay you. So your trade receivable gets impaired, which is not good. That's why an allowance you can allowance is given. Similarly, the reduction of such an allowance is taxable income. So when you reduce, when your customers actually starts paying you, what happens? Your allowance reduces. When your allowance reduces, it's a taxable income. Now you have to pay tax because your customers are paying you. On that amount, it's taxable. And this is disallowable. When you're writing a non-trade debt, non-trade, it's non-trade. So disallowable. Anything non-trade, disallowed. Under whatever category, whatever expense. But trade, because it is for trading, yes, it's allowed. For example, if you are giving a loan to a former employee or you are giving a loan to a customer, when you are writing that debt off, when they are not paying you, it is not allowable. It's disallowed. Now let us do questions on impairment losses and allowance for trade receivable. Illustration 3, impaired debts and allowance for receivable. Here you have to calculate the adjustment that is required to calculate TADP, Tax Adjusted Trading Profit. So where do you start this? What is the starting point of this question? You always need to know whenever adjustment is required, what is the starting point? Okay. So this is about impaired debts of 300 and profit statement shows how that 300 has been made. Okay, you have some trade debt that has been written off. You have some loan to former employees that has been written off. Then you have loan to supplier that has been written off. What did we recover? Trade debts recovered, loans to customer recovered. Now, then we have allowances for impaired receivable. It was 900, it went down to 700. So the difference is 200. Now, so adjustment is if there is difference between tax rule and your accounting rule, you need to add or deduct. If no, then it will be a zero. Okay, starting with trade debt, you have to start with this. We can start in this order. Trade debts written off. Okay, so trade debts written off will be see just in the previous slide we told trade debt written off and then when it's recovered it is already taxable this is that means you don't have to do any adjustment why because if, if it was not allowed and then you written off the expenses then you might have to add it back or it was allowed but you didn't write it then you have to add back sorry then you have to deduct with the profit but here they are saying trade written off okay see this was recovered 520 the rate of 400 they recovered then it's taxable then it's taxable for which it will be zero Okay, when it is taxable, there is no adjustment because already it has been adjusted. Next, loan to former employee. Loan to former employee is not allowed. So what did they do? They took that 280 also to get impaired debts. They deducted that also. You have to add back. You have to add back now. It's not allowed. So loan to former employees written off only trade debts are allowable but loan to former employees are not so you have to they deducted 280 you have to add back 280 then the third one loan to supplier
loan to supplier tell me it's allowable or not it's not loan to supplier return of also needs to be added back how much 250 you have to add back okay you have to add back this to the profit profit is not given but when you have to add back because it's not allowed and that has been deducted because this is your profit and loss statement okay even though they are not showing you the negative sign but see this they have added all loans to supplier customer trade debts and then they got this 300 out of that written whatever they have recovered they deducted and then they got this 300 but you can't do that because tax rule says these are disallowed only trade debt is allowable that's why you have to add back this with the profit again loan to customer loan to supplier loan to former employee so now what about this even in the previous slide about this has been mentioned allowance for impaired receivable this is allowed this is allowed because it's for the trading purpose and it has been there in the profit and loss account so the difference is 200 what do you have to do already they have taken even tax rule says you have to take so no adjustment is required okay they have already done it tax rule also says it has to be there so both the rules are same so it will be zero moment in allowance the zero part is a little difficult zero means no adjustment there will be no impact that's why you don't have to do anything same that's the same reason for the first one why it is zero because they told trade date is allowable and trade date they have already adjusted here trade date written off and recovered in the PNL account is there so it is taxable also so it is zero no adjustment next trade debts recovered trade debts recovered no adjustment zero then was the next so we are done with this 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 and loan to supply this also we have finished we are only left with the last one loan to customer recovered what should we do this has been deducted this has been there you have to add add or deduct you have to deduct it because earlier they have added they have added in their income profit and loss account you have to deduct it why it's not allowed it's not allowed not allowed to means when something has been added in the pnl you have to deduct in the tax rule when something has been deducted there you have to add it's like that so loan to customer 150 you have to deduct this is because this is recovered recovered it's an income it's an income so this income is not allowed that's why you have to deduct it it was it was shown in the pnl account so don't go by this sign okay this 150 is in bracket this 250 is in positive don't go by this i understand this is an income recovered return off is an expense so you have to see the income and expense allowed or disallowed adjustment required or not required so now when you calculate the total what is it 380 it's a so this is the amount that you need to add back to the profit okay add back to profit you have to add this back to the profit profit has not been given to you okay so that's not it for disallowed expenditure we have some other items and you need to remember this table okay first type of expenditure provision for future cost like making a provision for future warranty cost this is allowable why because we give warranty for the when we are in the trade right it is for the purpose of the job only otherwise who gives warranty for personal reasons no one that's why it's allowable because it's purely for the trade notes provided this is 
calculate it according with UK GAAP or IFRS standard and you can estimate it with sufficient accuracy. Next expenditure, compensation. When you're giving compensation to employee, this is also allowable because you compensate employee when they have worked for you. It's purely for trading purpose. Only if it if it's for the benefit of trade. Okay. Third, redundancy. Redundancy that you have paid to your employee in excess of the statutory amount. There are some statutory amount which is fixed. Okay. Based on the jurisdiction that you have been located. Some redundancy amount is fixed. But if you want, you can give excess over ab above that amount. This is allowable. But limited if due to the cessation of trade. If you have seized your trade and then you have made them redundant, then it's limited. How much? Maximum four times the statutory amount. Maximum up to that much is allowable. After that, it's not allowable. Only if you have ceased trading and then you have made them redundant. Okay. Next, counseling services. Sometimes we give counseling services for employees who have been made redundant. This is allowable. Now, fifth expenditure for damages paid. Allowable. Only if paid in connection with the trade matter. And it is not a fine for breaking the law. If it's a fine for just breaking the law, it's not allowable. If it's for a trade matter that you are paying these damages, it's allowable. Everything at the end of the day to decide allowable or disallowable, connected with the trade. Is it connected with trade or not? If it is allowable, if it is not, not allowable. Very simple. Then theft, fraud, allowed. Only if it is by the employee, not by the business owner or the director. Okay. Educational courses, allowable. Only if it's for the trade purpose. Fines, not allowable. Unless the fines are for parking. Okay. Parking fines, not any parking fines. Parking for the employees of that company. But this is not allowable for directors or own, business owner. For them it's disallowed. For employees of the company only, parking fine is allowable. Then payment that constitutes a criminal offense like bribe, not allowable. Then pension, any pension that has been contributed to registered pension scheme, it's allowable. If it's not registered, not allowable. Okay, and if for employees provided paid by the year end, not allowable for business owner. This is only allowable for employees. Okay. Provided it's paid, not been accrued, then it's allowable. For business owner, not allowable. Premiums for insurance against an employee's death or illness, allowable. Removal expenses, allowable. Provided not an expansionary move. Expansionary means you want to expand. That's why you are moving. That's why you are relocating or removing then those expenses will not be allowed. Okay. Salaries accrued at year end. Allowed. Provided paid not more than nine months after the year end. Okay. Then it's allowed. So now let's do a question. There are five types of expenses which is given and you need to tell whether you have to add it back to the accounting profit or not. Okay. First one, drawings. You definitely need to add back. Why? Because it's not allowed. Drawings are not expenses. They are just you are withdrawing the profit. So you have to add back. 45,000 salary paid to the proprietor's spouse. Typical market rate is estimated to be 15,000. You need to add back. Yes, some what you have to add back 30,000. Why? Because up to 15,000 is allowed. The excess is not allowed. 
So excess is 30,000. That you need to add back. Next, subscription to a golf club where they meet their clients. You need to add back. You only need to add back when it's not allowed. Because this is not allowed. Okay. You don't simply subscribe to golf club for your trade purpose. It could be for personal reasons as well. Legal fees to acquire a short lease for seven years. You have to add back. Why? Because legal fee, okay, for the renewal of the short list is only allowed. Only that legal fee is allowed. Legal fee to acquire a short list is not allowed. Only the renewal part. So it's add back. And the last one. Trade related to NVQ training course for apprentice employee. No adjustment. You don't adjust this. Why? Because let's say this course is for the purpose of trade. Okay, this is a little tricky because we don't know what the course is. Let's assume this course is for trade. Uh, for trade. If this course is for trade, then this expense is allowable. Allowable means already it has been deducted in your PNL. Now you don't have to add back for the taxable reason for tax reason. Okay. So that's it. So now we are going to go through other adjustment for taxable trading income not included in the statement of profit and loss. What do you have to do? This adjustment is normally needed when a trader removes good from the business for her private use like sole trader. So what happens? The trader is treated for tax purpose as making a sale based on the selling price of the goods concerned. Even if the trader is taking the goods for personal use from his business, for the tax reason, you have to do an adjustment. It will be treated as a sale made to you based on the selling price of that good. But for the service, this rule does not apply. And don't ask me what is the rule because tax did not tell you what is the rule for service. So which means they will give you goods only. They will not give you supply of services in your exam because they have not mentioned the rule because it's very complex. Then this other adjustment. If it depends on how in the accounts the treatment was done. Let's say if the trader has accounted for this removal of goods as a drawing from the business, he has to add back. Okay. He or she, they would have already added back the cost element or removed it from the cost of the sales. This is in the accounts. If it, it was a drawing, if it was a drawing, they will add back the cost element and they will remove it from the cost of sales. For tax purpose, this is what you have to do. The profit element of the usual selling price must be added as goods taken for own use in the tax adjustment of profits computation. We'll do two questions on this, don't worry. And second treatment could be trader has not even accounted for this removal of good. Then for tax purpose, full selling price must be added as goods taken for own use. Now let's do questions using both the ways. There are two questions which we are going to do regarding goods for own use using both the ways illustration 4 and illustration 5 in the first one okay it is about a car dealer who removes a vehicle from the business for his own personal use it had cost the business 10000 market value was 12500 no entries has been made in the accounts to reflect this transaction other than the original purchase this is the second method. How do you account for this? So when you are doing this for the purpose of tax adjusted trading profit, remember you have to, this transaction will be shown as 
us a sell a sell to the owner that means you have sold this vehicle to the owner that's how you have to show this transaction owner has sold the vehicle to himself based on the selling price that's how this transaction will be shown for the purpose of tax <coughs> so let's do that okay and how do you do that what is the adjustment required only the original purchase cost has been recorded right so so for the tax adjustment you have to add the full market value of 12500 because they have already shown 10000 as you buying the vehicle at 10000 now you have to write it at market value 12500 okay you have to add this add 12,500 to accounting profit AB. Now, if the removal of this vehicle has been accounted for by adding back the cost element, the first method, this is the second method that we have been in the slide, that they are not recording this transaction at all, the drawings. What if it was the first one where they have added back the cost of the vehicle? When calculating accounting profit, only the profit element would need it to be added back to the accounting profit. What is the profit element? It's at 10,000. They have sold at 12,500. So 2,500 is the profit. This they have to add back to accounting profit if they have done it according to the first way. That means they have added back the cost of the vehicle when calculating accounting profit. In the first one, okay, this scenario, they did not even record the transaction. That's why they have to record the full 12,500 to accounting profit. Second scenario, they have added the cost while calculating accounting profit. That's why only the difference they have to add back to accounting profit. It's always like this. Okay, now going to illustration five. This is about a toy seller. Cost price is 480. No adjustment has been made. Now, first one. Normal markup on goods is 25. Profit margin is 25%. First, we'll go by A. Okay. You need to find the full selling price under both because we only have to deal with selling price, whether we have to add that to the profit or not. Always work with the selling price. You have to know how to get the selling price from the margin and the markup. Okay. Here, what is the cost 480? What is the markup 25%? How do you get it? Add, multiply the cost with 100 divided by 125. It's always like that. Whenever it's markup, it's 100 divided by, you add the percentage. For example, this is 25, that's why 125. If, let's say the markup was 30%, then it would be 100 divided by 130. It's always like this. With 100, you add that markup in the denominator. Numerator will always be 100. And you multiply that fraction with the cost. It's always like this. Okay? So now, it's 600. This is the selling price. Wait. I'm sorry, there, there has been a mistake. I've reversed it. It's 125 here and 100. It's markup, not margin. 125 over 100. Because already this 25% has been added with it. So you have to take it out now. Okay. 600 would be the selling price. You can always do for markup like this okay now 
What about the second one? Profit margin is 25%. It's margin now. How do you do that? This time, it's a little different. Again, 480 multiply by fraction changes. This time, it's 100 divided by what? 75. U minus from 100. You don't add, you minus with 100. And also, 100 becomes the numerator, 75 goes down. Whereas in the markup, you see in A, it's 125 divided by 100, not 100 divided by 125 which is 640. <coughs> Why is 75? Because 100 minus 25 is 75. Okay. So it's 640. This you have to add back. Next, we have deductible expenditure not charged in statement of profit and loss. Now, most important item of a deductible expenditure that is not charged in profit and loss is capital allowance. Okay. For the tax purpose, capital allowance is deducted, but from profit and loss, it's not deducted. Okay. These are deductible as if they were a trading expense. Okay, you will take this as a trading expense and you need to deduct it. In addition to this, other examples under this category that you can deduct but it's not there in the profit and loss are lease premium. Okay, lease premium on short leases. Later we are going to go through lease. That also allowable trading element only. Of that lease premium. Not everything of the lease is allowable. Okay. The trading element of the lease premium is allowable. That is the rent that you are getting, the lease premium that you are getting is allowable. Okay. For short leases. Then the next example where a business owner uses his or her private residence, partly for business, partly for private purpose. Okay. That means he's using his own residence, let's say, as an office, and also he's living in it. Let's say he has five rooms. Out of five, maybe two he's using for the office purpose, the other three are for private purpose. So only the business portion of that resident is allowable. Business portion of the running expenses, all electricity, telephone bills, only for the business. Whichever, like whatever the rooms you have been using for the business purpose of that resident, only expenses for that portion is allowable. Not the entire expense. Private portion is not allowable. Business call from the private telephone is all allowable. Private calls from the private telephone, not allowable. Expenses that are wholly and exclusively for the trade that has been met for the private that has been met from the private fund of the owner, you can deduct. Now, short lease premium. What is a short lease premium? Do you know what is lease, by the way? Lease means when you are taking or using any asset which is not your own, someone else is owning, you are just using it for a fixed time period for which you are paying them an amount, a lump sum amount in installments. Let's say you have taken a lease for a car for four years or a machinery for four years. So in this four year, you have been paying them some amount, which is known as lease premium. Whoever is the landlord, whoever is owning, they receive this premium. When they grant a short lease, leases are of two types, short and long. Short means it's, it's less than 50 years. Long means it's more than 50 years. We are not worried about the long lease. Why? Long lists, they are not taxable. Only the short leases are taxable. That's why. So as the landlord receives this premium, even this is charged to income tax. Okay. This is this comes under property income. 
which we are going to study next my next lecture will be on property income only there we are going to study premiums in detail but for right now just know short term premium it's an expense that is allowable okay now where a business okay let's say they are the tenant tenant is the one who is paying the premium for using the asset landlord is the one who is giving that access to the asset it's his asset okay why do they do this premiums because it's less costly compared to when you're purchasing it outright okay so if the business is the tenant they pay the premium for the business use of it so for them it's an expense which they can deduct it's a deductible expense in calculating their taxable trading profit for the landlord it will be treated as a property income see the two parties will be treated on the same income on different ways for the tenant it's an expense okay for the landlord it's a property income you need to understand this now this deduction will not appear in the business account as a rent expense when you deduct you will see they will not be deducted as a rent expense however using accounting principles the lease premium will be charged to the accounts over the lease period by an annual amortization charge how we depreciate asset non current asset because they are tangible for lease also we amortize them because leases are intangible assets okay now the tax adjustment that is required for lease premium I like this. You need to add this back. Why? Amortization charged in the statement of profit and loss disallowable as capital. How any expenses on non-current asset is disallowed, and also depreciation is disallowed because of that. Same way for lease also. So that's why you need to add back. the amortization part of the list okay deduct deduct what allowable expense portion of the lease premium you can deduct only allowable portion now the allowable deduction for the trader is the property income element of the premium spread evenly over the period of the lease let's say the lease is for 5 years over the 5 years you can deduct okay you will divide that property income divide by 5 like that remember that the property income taxable on the landlord is like this when we do premium you need to remember this formula p into 2% into n minus 1 p stands for premium 2% is fixed it's always 2% n minus 1 n is number of the lease term which will be given to you in the exam or alternative method is p premium into 51 minus n divided by 50 why 50 because we told short term lease has to be 50 less than 50 that's why p is the total premium n is the duration of lease in years in years they will tell you 40 years 30 years whatever less than 50 only so now let's do question on lease premium illustration 6 and illustration 7 Illustration six is about a lease premium, and seven is use of home for business. Here, he is paying a premium of twenty five two hundred, a twenty one year lease. Okay. So now you need to calculate how much he can deduct. So what do you have to do? You have to use the formula, which is P minus. P into two percent into n minus one. P is twenty-five thousand two hundred. Okay. Then deduct twenty-five thousand two hundred into two percent into twenty-one. Minus one, which is 
10, 0, 80. 100,080. When you deduct, it is 15, 120. So this will come as a property income for the landlord. Okay. Remember, you can do this in an alternative way. How? By using the second formula. What is it? Second formula is P into 51 minus N divided by 50. So let's do this also and see. P is 25,200 into 51 minus 21 divided by 50. Which is again 15,120 only. It's the same answer. You have to use any one of the two. Okay. Now, remember, this is overall, the total. We only need for 31st March 2023, only for one year. So, you need to divide your answer by 21. So, this 15,120 will need to be divided by 21 years, each year. Okay, each year it will be 720. This. This will be the allowable trading deduction. Each year 720. Till 21 years like this, it will keep reducing 720, 720, 720 like that. Okay. Now, come into illustration 7. Calculate the amount. Florentia can claim as an allowable deduction for use of her office at home. Okay. She uses one room of her five room as an office. That means one only, one fifth as an office. The other four fifth is personally used. So he can only claim one fifth of the expense. <coughs> now, utilities, television repairs, groceries, mortgage, interest on 20,000. Okay. Now tell me. How much? You, when you see the expenditure, can we claim deduction for all the expenditure of one-fifth? No. No. Only the trading purpose. So, if you see the television repairs, do you need television for trading purpose? No. So, you can't claim deduction. What about groceries? Can you claim? No. You can't claim groceries also. They are, they are, not, they are private. So, what are the two that you can claim? Utilities and mortgage interest. 1,100 and 900. When you add this together, it's 2000. So you can only claim one fifth of 2000, which is 400. Only this is allowed. Now, the third category income included in the statement of profit and loss, but it's not taxable. There are three categories of income which you need to adjust here. First one is capital receipt. Capital receipt will be charged according to capital gain tax. Okay. So, what do you have to do when you have capital receipt? So, when you are selling a capital asset, what do you have to do? When you were calculating accounting profit, okay, you take the sale of capital asset also there. But for the tax purpose, it's not allowed. Okay, you already deducted the expenses and the income will be added. You already took that sale of capital asset, you added, right? You wrote as an income in, while calculating accounting profit in the PL account, but you can't take it as an income because it's not taxable. So, what do you do? You now deduct it. You deduct it to calculate tax adjusted trading profit. Now, there are other income like savings income, property income, dividend income. What do you have to do with this? You This also you have to deduct because while calculating accounting profit, you added this income in the PL account. That's why you have to deduct now because they are not taxable. However, if you see savings, property, dividend, they are charged to income tax. Okay. Even though they are charged to income tax, they will be included somewhere else, not in the trading profit. You understanding? Yesterday I told you the same thing in the previous lecture when I was going through employment income. 
you don't it is taxable but separately not in this now and the third category first category is capital receipts second is savings dividend and property category third both the first two you have to deduct third one income that is exempt from tax what do you have to do such as interest received on overpaid income tax you should know all the income that is exempt from tax what do you have to do tell me what is the adjustment while calculating accounting profit you put that income now you deduct okay so you deduct in all this case you have to deduct while calculating taxable trading profit whether it is capital receipt whether it is other forms of income whether it is income that is exempt from tax now relief for pre trading expenditure this is the next section of this lecture this is a very small section this only tells that any expenditure that you have incurred up to 7 years before the starting of the business you can claim deduction for it and the expenditure is not any expenditure revenue expenditure okay it will be treated as expense on the day when you have started the business even though you have incurred it 7 years back more than 7 years you can't claim deduction that is the old rule that's why i've highlighted the 7 years rule for you let's go through an example let's say abel started trading on 1st of april 2022 he has spent 6000 in the previous 6 months on adver on advertising okay can he claim the 6000 he can because just 6 month it falls in the 7 year category within 7 years okay it is treated as a trading expense so you can deduct now let us do one question before we move on to the last part of this lecture that is cash basis for small and incorporated business test your understanding for so here you have been given some expenses from profit and loss and with the expenses there are some notes and net profit given to you what is the date on 1st of june 2022 Okay. Now, so we'll read the notes, and the requirement is calculate William's tax adjusted trading profit for year end at thirty first May two thousand twenty three. Your computation should start with the net profit figure of thirty thousand two hundred. Where is the profit? Yes, this one. This is your starting point. Even if the question does not say. it's a default position that you have to start with net profit you should know this okay now i should list all the items referred to in notes 1 to 8 indicating by the use of zero any items that do not require adjustment <coughs> so we'll see okay first one private accommodation so here William and his wife lived in a flat situated above the clothing shop of the expenditure included for light heat bread and rents 40% relates to the flat next car expenses William drove for total of 12000 miles of which 9000 are for private journeys okay third repairs and renewals the figure of 5660 what is the figure this one okay no three Includes two thousand two hundred for decorating clothing shop, and one thousand fifty for decorating private flat. The building was in unusable state when it was purchased. <coughs> okay, two thousand decorating clothing shop. This one decorating private flat. Now four professional fees is made up of accountancy, debt collection, and legal fees, and included in the figure of accountancy here. It's two fifty in respect of capital gain tax work. Number five, wages and salary. So in this wages and salary, there is a salary of fifteen thousand five hundred, which is paid to William's wife. She works in the clothing shop as a sales assistant. The other sales assistant's annual salary is eleven thousand. 
Number six, other operating expenses. The figure, so this was the figure given. Okay, it includes 640 gift to customer, food hamper 40, 320 gift to customer, carrying an advertisement for the clothing shop, costing 1.6 each, 100 for a donation to a national charity, 40 for a donation to a local charity. Okay, now goods for own use. Okay. William took clothes out of the shop as personal use without paying for them. The cost of this clothes was 460. Selling price was 650. He did not make any adjustment in the accounts. And eight, capital allowance was 13,060 for plant and machinery. This is a very easy question. You just need to calculate. But remember, even if you have to calculate inside, you have to know the reason. What is allowed? What is disallowed? What do you have to add? What do you have to deduct? Or whether you have to put zero or no adjustment? So let's do that. So we'll do from here. Okay. So quickly, we'll start with the net profit. Thirty thousand two hundred. Now, first we'll do whatever we have to add. Okay, we'll add everything and whatever needs to be deducted, we'll deduct at the end. First, let's do the addition. Okay, we'll go one by one. See, the best way to solve a question like this is go in the order of this. Go in the order the question is presented to you. Why? You can do it in any order, it doesn't matter. The reason is if you do it in this order, it automatically ticks out. That means you can be very sure that you have taken all the expenses. Whereas if you have gone in a very, uh, you know, like your own choice, you know, for example, some of you might start with wages and salary. Then they might think, okay, lose to depreciation. Then there is a higher chance of you missing out some of the expenses. So go in this order, it's very easy. Then you can tick take out the expenses that you have taken. So first, since depreciation is given, let's start with the depreciation. Okay, first expense. Depreciation, no issue, you can add. Why? You have to add depreciation. You have deducted here. Why? Because depreciation is not allowable according to tax rule. You have to know this. When we buy non-current asset, it's a capital expenditure, not allowed. If capital expenditure is not allowed, same wise depreciation on that non-current asset is also not allowed. We have we have gone through this earlier. Okay, now everything we are applying in one question. So add depreciation. There is a no there is no separate note for depreciation. So as it is, you can take 4760. 4760. Now next is so deposition is taken light and heat okay light and heat for light and heat there is a note one okay so you need to go to that note one for private accommodation they say 40 percent relate to the flat okay what is the light and heat expenses 1525 so you can only take 40 percent of that flat because in that flat that is situated above the clothing shop okay so only 40 percent of that expense you can claim uh sorry lived in a flat situated above the clothing shop okay you can't take this sorry i'm sorry it is you can't take it that's why you have to add back it's not allowable 40 percent of it is not allowable so here yeah. 40% of 1525 not allowed. Add back. How much? 610. Next. This is also gone. Car expenses. So, car expenses, we have to go to that note. 4720. You see, oldie 
private journeys is not allowed you have to add back the private journeys only business journeys are allowed so 9000 over 12000 into the expense is not allowed the not allowed expenses only we have to add back okay so 9000 divided by don't go and take the business portion and divide 3000 by 12000 that is allowed okay please understand what we are doing we are adding the disallowed expenses that you have already deducted before okay that's why private portion we are adding back into 4720 which is 3540 okay now next repairs and renewal okay under repairs and renewal we'll go to note 3 so as you can see there are two expenses one for decorating clothing shop other for decorating private flight tell me decorating the clothing shop this 2200 do we have to do an adjustment for it tell me think no he is in the clothing industry this is a trading expense it's allowable so he doesn't have to do any adjustment for it so but still you have to write here you can't ignore it you have to show it as a zero okay decorating clothing shop is zero because no adjustment what about decorating private fl uh, flat decorating private flat is not allowed so you have to add back okay how much was it mm, 1050 this you have to add back now this is gone next rent and rates so we'll go to note one just a bit, okay rent and rates 40 percent of that rent so 40 percent is not allowed so add back what is the amount of the rent 3900 rent 40 percent of 3900 is not allowed 1560 then next professional fees in professional fees i think we have two three expenses so we'll go to note four yes accountancy legal fees debt collection so accountancy tell me accountancy is a trade expense as allowable so no adjustment but you have to write accountancy here zero next they told in accountancy there is a capital gain work of 250 that has been included what do you do that is not allowed you need to add back right 250 you have to add back so capital <coughs> capital gain tax work CGT work 250 you have to add then legal fees legal fees in connection with the purchase of the shop is it allowable no when you're purchasing the shop legal fee is not okay you have done this you have gone under the legal phase what are allowable what are not this is not allowable when you are purchasing a shop it's a capital asset you're purchasing something of a capital nature so legal fee in that is not allowed but if you are repairing renewing and all and incurring a legal fee that is allowed that's why you did you have to add back 1200 legal fees now debt collection So debt collection is of 400 tell me adjustment is needed no debt collection is because of the work trade it's allowable so no adjustment zero now that's over coming to wages and salary so we'll go to node 5 now 
remember the excess salary is not allowed the excess salary you need to add back okay up to 11000 is allowable but wife is paid 15500 so excess not allowed okay excess salary to wife what is the difference 15500 minus 11000 this you have to add back is not allowed 4500 then this is also over other operating expenses note 6 here we have plenty you have to see okay so tell me gift of food hamper 460 sorry 640 this is gift to customer of food pamper costing 40 each so 640 is you have to add back it's not allowable gifts to customer it's not an allowable expenditure you have to add back that also food it's food is disallowed so 640 you have to add back food hamper then what's next there was a gift of pen okay 320 for the gift of customer of pen carrying an advertising for the clothing shop it carries an advertisement for the clothing shop so this one is gift of pen you don't have to do any adjustment it is zero because it's allowed okay then what's next then there's a donation to national charity and donation to local charity national charity is 100 national charity is not allowed you have to add back <coughs> Donation to national charity. I'm writing NC 100 add back. What about local charity? Local charity is no adjustment, that's allowed. Local charity LC. What else? See whether I have taken everything from the expenses or not. So when we go through the notes, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth is taken seventh one seventh note okay goods taken for own use because eighth one is capital allowance that you have to deduct okay here cost is 460 selling price is 650 goods when you are taking for own consumption remember it is shown as a sale to the owner so you have to take the selling price which is 650 not the cost okay this you have to this you have to Add bag is not allowed. Own use. 650. You have to take the selling price and add back. Now, you have to deduct capital allowance at the end. How much is the capital allowance? It's given in note 8. 13,060. And the final answer is 36,000. This is your tax adjusted trading profit. Okay, try it yourself and see whether you are getting 36,000 or not. And getting 36,000 is not so important, but you have to understand all this why it is zero, why it is added, why it is deducted, what amount is added, what amount is allowed. This you have to know. Okay, which we have covered in the entire lecture. The last part of this lecture, cash basis for small unincorporated business. Remember in the beginning of this lecture, I told you we follow accrual basis except 
under limited circumstances for small unincorporated business you can opt for cash basis so now let me introduce you to the cash basis now unincorporated business whether sole trader or partnership they can choose to calculate their profit and losses on cash basis that is based on cash received and cash paid okay now provided they have annual cash receipt of not more than 150000 that means their annual cash receipt should not exit 150000 to opt for cash basis otherwise they can't opt for cash basis then it will be accrual basis now cash basis is not available for companies and limited liability partnership you need to remember this if unincorporated business chooses cash basis they can continue to account for cash basis until annual cash receipt exit 300000 the moment it exits 300000 automatically from cash basis you are switched to accrual basis now in your exam it should be assumed okay that cash basis does not apply normally accrual basis is only applied unless the question says that for this business it's cash basis you have to assume it's not cash basis that's the default position you are at in all questions where sole trader and partnerships are there not limited liability partnership okay unlimited partnership now main principle of cash basis is that they are applied in the same way to property income and trading income later on when we go through property income that's my next lecture there you will see that all property incomes are calculated on cash basis only same like how now we are calculating trading income principle is the same but there is some minor difference when it comes to capital sorry when it comes to trading income and property income that minor difference is in relation to capital expenditure and flat rate expense deduction which apply to trading income which we'll see later on okay now for trading income when you're using cash basis okay you will calculate your cash receipt you will calculate your cash payment Then, business like any other business can prepare its accounts to any date in the year. Expenditure on buildings cannot be deducted when paid. What did we say? When we pay for an expenditure, we can calculate, right? But this rule says only for buildings when you are expending, you can't deduct when you are when you are paid. Structures and building allowances can be claimed in respect of qualifying expenditure rather you can claim for some allowances there are some allowances under structure and building provided the expenditure is a qualifying expenditure now there is no distinction when you are using cash basis for trading income understand there is no difference between revenue and capital why because they deal with cash receipt and payment the moment you pay the cash and the moment you receive the cash and you will calculate the profit they don't care whether the cash you paid is for capital or revenue expenditure they don't and this is for the tax purpose okay there is no restriction between capital and revenue in respect of plant and machine and equipment for tax purpose therefore what do you have to do purchases are allowable deductions when paid for Proceeds are treated as taxable cash receipts when asset is sold. Capital allowances remain available for expenditures on cars only. Capital cost of the car is not an allowable deduction when paid. No. See, capital allowances you can claim when you, when you are spending on car. But you don't deduct the capital cost of the car. Okay because the capital cost of the car is not an allowable deduction when you have paid for that car in your tax exam you can claim for the flat rate expense flat rate means one rate they will give and it is flat 
it's a flat rate expense deduction for car expenses instead of capital allowances on car car is an asset where you have two things either you can claim for flat rate expense deduction or you can go for capital allowance but for the purpose of the tax exam they told you can claim flat rate expense instead of the capital allowances okay and capital allowances is not only available for car also on the car fuel and also other car expenses why because it's easier flat rate expense is easier compared to capital allowances now there are some advantages of cash basis one it's very simple right you don't have to account for receivable you don't have to account for payable you don't have to account for inventory therefore you can't tax the profit okay until it is realized profit needs to be realized then only it is taxed that means cash has to be available for you to pay your tax which is good disadvantage however is you can't carry forward the loss you can only carry forward your loss and set against the future trading profit profit has to be from trading activity whereas if you are going through accrual basis which is normally which we do then you have many options for your loss relief it is not available for cash basis okay now flat rate expense we have been talking about what is it see this okay whether or not you are using cash basis unincorporated business can claim for this okay they can opt to use flat rate expense adjustments so to replace the calculation of actual cost incurred in respect of certain expenses they can opt for this however tax in tax okay the tax examining team has confirmed that flat rate expense will only be asked where the business has chosen the cash basis see in reality whether you choose the cash basis or not you can opt for flat rate expense correct but for the purpose of your tax clearly they have mentioned only when you have chosen the cash basis you can opt for this flat rate expense and second thing if the cash basis applies you have to assume flat rate expense will apply okay so cash basis flat rate expense go hand in hand in your tax exam that's what you have to assume next we'll see how do you adjust the flat rate expense based on your expense if it's a car expense okay like capital cost of the car or running cost of the car like insurance repair services fuel then it's an allowable deduction you have to understand this you can calculate this amount remember when we were going through employment benefit we went through car right amap annual mileage allowance payment allowable mileage allowance payment right every employee is given the company car and they are given some mileage allowance same formula we have to use here using the rate of what 45 pence and 25 pence per business mile for the first 10000 45 pence over 10000 25 pence it's okay that was allowed for employees the same allowance as for property business and employed individuals use of own car if you are having property business you will be having your own car if you are an employed person self employed you will be using your own car same mileage allowance will be available here also so what if you are a self employed person you can still do this the method is same you need to go through my uh, previous lectures employed income to understand this a m a p i have done questions there now next expense when you are using a commercial building part of it for the private reasons like a private accommodation in a guest house or a small hotel then private use adjustment okay is a fixed amount whether for household goods or service or rent or food or utility fixed amount based on number of occupants when it's privately accommodated how many occupants will see 
and the private element of other expenses also needs to be adjusted like mortgage interest and inter building rates and in your tax exam flat rate expense adjustment for the private use of a commercial building is required it will be provided within a question if it is required question will tell you whether you have to adjust your flat rate expense or not for the private use of a commercial building and you need to note when you are asked to calculate taxable profit using cash basis you have to start by revenue received and then you have to make any necessary deductions or additions to that figure okay you can calculate by adjusting the net profit also but that is under accrual basis okay when you are doing accrual basis we adjust the net profit when it's cash basis we start with the revenue receipt however when you go to the net profit remember this method is likely to be more complicated and time consuming you might be given both cash basis and net profit okay and when you have opted for cash basis and you are told to calculate taxable profit better to adjust through revenue receipt rather than net profit you can get the right answer using both the methods but it's more easier and more better if you use through revenue receipt if it's a cash basis rather than going through net profit because it's more time consuming and complicated now let us do one final question before we do some of the practice objective test questions and finally summarize this lecture test your understanding 5 so test your understanding 5 is going to be from the cash basis and after that we are going to do practice objective test questions from test understanding 6 till test your understanding 11 so let's go through 5 here you are supposed to use cash basis in b and in a use the normal accrual basis and claim capital allowances of 9806 in respect of fixtures and car now you have been given the revenue cost of sales the expenses and the net profit now rosie opened a bed and breakfast on 1st august 2022 and has prepared the first set of accounts to 5th april 2023 If you calculate the number of months, it's August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March for eight months. Okay. Now, so the revenue. Revenue includes six five seven five, which is still receivable at five April two thousand twenty three. Two. Rose Rosemary paid eighty percent of her purchase by fifth April and remainder in June. There is no closing inventory. Lives with a husband, and four thousand nine hundred of the cost relates to their personal use. Three. Depreciation. Nine thousand. Depreciation relates to fixtures and fittings. For nine thousand and a car purchased on first August two thousand twenty-two. Rosemary purchased the car with CO two emissions of forty-eight. For nine thousand six hundred, she uses the seventy percent for business purpose. Four car expenses of four thousand two hundred, out of which eleven thousand business might. Five other expenses are allowable for tax purpose. However, Rosemary paid four sixty of the expenses in June two thousand twenty-three. Now, the cash basis private use adjustments for two occupants in a business premise for eight months is four thousand. See, they have already done. Eight for the eight months, and they have given you. Okay, you don't have to adjust it again. Fair enough. Now, first we'll do the normal accrual basis, and then we'll do the cash basis. Or you can do it the other way around also. There is no issue. Okay. So when you are doing the normal accrual basis, remember you start with net profit. You have to go to net profit and first adjust it. Okay. So let's quickly do that. So net profit is eleven one sixty five. You start from there. Accrual basis. Net profit. Eleven one sixty five. 
okay then remember what we have to do we have to do the adjustments okay either add deduct or zero if no adjustment now so let's start with the food and utilities okay it's in note 2 so they told 4900 is for the personal use so this personal use is not allowed you have to add back food and utility private use 4900 next depreciation depreciation is 2500 okay it is for fixtures and fittings so you can add because it's not allowable for the purpose of tax then we have car expenses okay car expenses and other expenses we'll see how much we can how much we need to add or deduct so here 4200 okay note 4 so car expenses 11,000 is business this thing. Just a uh, minute. Now, you have to find out the percentage of private use. Okay. which okay so now wait a minute we have to find out okay the total miles that has been this is 11,000 business mile okay we have okay so it's here you have to go to point three to get the private use here they told 70 percent of the car is for business purpose that means 30 percent is private so only 30 percent is not allowed that you need to add back so 30 percent of 4200 needs to be added back sometimes it happens when you are in a specific point but you need the help of other points also like how we need point three so 30% is private use of 4200 not allowed which is 1260 then what about other expenses <coughs> see all are allowable so there is no adjustment required okay then you add it's 19825 you need to deduct capital allowances because this is accrual basis so they have already given you 9806 okay they have given you the capital allowance there in a in the requirement itself they have given you the this thing capital allowance now 10 0 1 9 this is your tax ttp tax adjusted trading profit now coming to cash basis remember your starting point needs to be revenue okay so revenue so from revenue how much is the revenue 48035 you need to deduct receivable go down and check it includes this much which is still receivable it has you have not received yet deduct customer did not pay 6575 so it's 41460 then less food and utilities 
how much 15670 you can only take up to 80% because they have paid 80% only remainder they didn't pay so up to 80% you can deduct 15670 into 80% which is 12536 then less expenses depreciation capital expenditure because when you have paid for capital expenditure now you can deduct this cash basis then car expenses then other expenses okay there is a separate note for depreciation you have to do a separate working remember under cash basis okay depreciation is not allowable so what do you do now can we deduct the cost of that fixtures and fitting for which depreciation is there that is allowable when paid for okay the cost of the car is not available but however capital allowances are available so when it's a depreciation remember okay the depreciation charge relates to fixtures fittings and equipment and car purchased you see there are two things that depreciation is for both for the car and the equipment but when we pay for fixtures and fitting depreciation is allowable but depreciation for car is not allowable that's why you can't take depreciation okay under cash basis depreciation is not allowable so it will be zero expenses will be zero for depreciation come into capital expenditure when we have bought fixtures and fitting that is allowable when we have paid it for so how much we paid for this thing we bought it for 9000 we bought fixtures and fitting for 9000 and we have paid it so we can deduct this capital expenditure from a profit and loss account why because they'll be shown normally as trading expenses under cash basis that's why you need to be very good with cash basis what comes and what does not come before you do this question then car expenses for car expenses working too there's a separate working required for car expenses what is it remember when it's a cash basis you can claim a flat rate expense deduction then capital allowances will not be available and tax have already told you in the taxation exam okay when cash basis is used you should also assume flat rate expense not capital allowance so how much car expense how much should be car expense just a minute okay just a minute there is one doubt that i had mm. okay see for car expenses you need to calculate the mileage allowance how many drug this 11000 so according to amap first 10000 will be at 45 pence the next 1000 will be at 25 pence when you add them together 4500 and 250 it is 4750 this is the flat rate deduction okay 4750 which you have to deduct then other expenses other expenses is 14500 but out of 460 this is related this was paid in june 2023 so you have to deduct it under cash basis you can't take it it's for the next period So fourteen five hundred minus four four sixty. 
14040 deduct and the total will be and wait a minute one more thing you have to add private use adjustment remember they told 4000 this 4000 you forgot already it is adjusted cash basis private use adjustments for two occupant is 4000 this you have to add it's an income okay done now 5134 this is the tax adjusted trading profit according to cash basis okay now let us go to test your understanding six okay so here what adjustment must Xander make to the accounting profit when calculating adjusted trading profit for the tax purpose? This is about CO2 emission. Okay. Has included a deduction in the accounting profit of 4,800 in respect of annual leasing cost, which has CO2 emission of 83. Tell me. See, this is a car, lease car. Okay. When it's a lease car, 85% is allowable, 15% is not allowable. Up to 15% disallowed. So here they told what is the adjustment? Adjustment means disallowed portion. Whenever adjustment comes, adjustment means what is disallowed. That will you adjust. You don't adjust the allowing portion. So 15% of 4800 is what you have to adjust. 15% of 4800, which is 720. So 720 is the adjustment that you have to do. Always remember. Then test your understanding 7. Jada runs her own business selling handmade greeting cards which of the following is not deductible in arriving at a tax adjusted trading profit. First one. Repair to her shop premises two weeks after she opened the shop. Advertising in local paper. Cost of writing of inventory obtained from the previous owner. Parking fine incurred by Jada for parking outside the shop. Tell me. Another way, if you don't know what is not deductible, at least know what is deductible so that the odd one is anyway out. For example, you know this is deductible. A. Because repair is allowable. Advertising in local paper is also allowable. Even D, parking outside your shop isn't allowable. So what is out? C. Wait a minute, this is no, the correct answer is D. It's not C because check the business cost of writing of inventory obtained from the previous owner. It's a it's an it's a trading expense. Okay, parking fine incurred by Jared for parking outside the shop. It's D. Why? Because we forgot he owns a business. So parking fines for business owners are not deductible. You see, even I have made this mistake. So could you. Looks like D is correct. D is uh, not the right answer, right? Looks like D is deductible. Yes, it is deductible, but he is a self-employed person. So for business owner, parking fines are not deductible. Okay, the fines for the parking. But if it was for employees, then it is deductible. And all the other costs are deductible. Test understanding 8. So, this is about what amount needs to be added back to the accounting profit. Okay, it's about, you can see impaired trade days written off, subscription to magazine. Late payment interest in respect of tax, legal fee in respect of acquisition of new shop. You need to understand what is deductible and not.
Okay, you need to understand what needs to be added back and what not. So we'll go one by one. Okay, start with impaired trade days written off. Tell me, before jumping to the right answer, tell me, impaired trade days written off. Is it allowable or not? It is allowable. This is allowable for tax purpose. Trade days written off is allowable for tax purpose. Uh, what about subscription? It's for wine trade publication. And remember, you are in the wine merchant. So this is also allowable subscription. What about late payment interest in respect of taxes on the business profit? Remember, late payment interest is a personal liability of the owner of the business. So this is not allowable. Okay, late payment interest for the business owner, not allowable, disallowed. And what about the legal fee when you are acquiring a new shop? This is a capital expenditure in nature. So this is also not allowable. So what do you need to add back? Only the disallowed expenses. That is this too you have to add back. When you add back, it adds up to 2775. So B is the right answer. Test your understanding nine. Which of the following receipt is not taxable as trading income? Insurance proceeds from loss of trade, impaired debts recovered, repayment interest received on a tax repayment, sales proceeds for selling inventory. Tell me, not taxable as a trading income. First, A, insurance proceeds from loss of our trade. A is not the right answer because it is a trading income. It's a, it is taxable as a trading income. B, impaired debt recovered. No, that is also taxable as trading income. C, repayment interest received on a tax repayment. C is not the right answer. And D, sale proceeds from selling inventory. C is the right answer. C is not taxable as a trading income. Whereas all the other three are taxable as trading income. 10. Okay. Fred, okay. How much of this expenditure they can deduct for tax purpose? First one. He starts trade on 1st of Jan 2023. He incurs the funding expenditure for 12 months. Rent for his business property, 5,000. New suit, 600. Payment 1000 to an advertising agency to advertise campaign to run through January. Okay, tell me. He can deduct for tax purpose means allowable expenses. Is a rent unallowable? Tell me. Yes, rent is allowable because it's for business property. So wholly and purposely for the trade. Rent is allowable. What about new suit? It is to impress prospective customer. It's not allowable. And C payment for advertising? Yes. So the 5,000 and 1,000 are allowable. So 6,000. C is the right answer. And finally, test your understanding 11. The last question for this lecture. How much you can add back to the net profit? Add back means it needs to be a disallowable expense. Okay. Depreciation, legal fee, entertainment. So depreciation, tell me, depreciation is allowable or not? Not allowable, disallowed. Immediately you should know this. Legal fee. In acquiring a new 10-year lease on his business premises. Tell me. Not allowable. Why? It is not for renewal purpose. You are acquiring it. So legal fees for acquiring list not allowed. Entertainment. One is allowable, one is not allowable. Which one is allowable? Entertainment of staff is allowable. Entertainment of client not allowable. So what needs to be added back? Addition of the disallowed. Depreciation 2000 plus 1000, 3000, 3000 plus 4300, 7300. Except entertainment of staff, you have to add the other three disallowed expense. 
So answer is C. So that's it. Now we'll summarize this lecture. So let's summarize this lecture. This is income from self-employment and you have to see through the badges of trade whether this factors exist or not. Number one, the subject matter. Two, period of ownership. Third, frequency. Four, improvement. Five, reason for sale. Six, motive. If these things are there, if it's yes, then it's a trading income. For example, the motive is a profit motive and the reason for sale is not a forced sale and the frequency of the transaction is high. Period of ownership is not so long between buying and selling and looking at the nature of the transaction. Okay, If these factors are not there, for example, motive of profit is not there, the reason for sale is a forced sale. Frequency is less, it's a one-off transaction. And you are holding the asset for a long period of time, like land or shares, then it's capital gain, which is charged under capital gain tax. Then we went through adjustments to profit, starting with allowable expenditure. Those expenditure, which is wholly, exclusively, and necessarily for the purpose of trade. Second are the capital allowances, which you can claim. Then additional trading income like goods own consumption. Then we have additional expenditure like lease premium, business expenditure paid personally. Then we have non-trading income like capital receipt and assets as other income like savings, dividend or we have exempt income. Then the last is cash basis for which is optional which is for small un unincorporated business. And if you are going for the cash basis, you can also opt for flat rate expense. Okay. So that's it. Thank you for watching. And I shall see you in the next lecture. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you get the notification of my latest video updates. And you can watch all these lectures under the playlist taxation lecture. Not only that, you can get all these PPT slides. All you need to do is go to the above section of my channel, go down and click taxation lecture. Thank you and take care.